Hi YouTube, Art here again with another Call of Duty audio video and in today's audio video we are going to discuss how your big box gamer headset is ripping you off. I wanted to know what it was like for you guys to go to a big box store, try to buy a headset. So I got in the car, I went to Best Buy and I shopped around. I went to the PC gaming section, I went to the console gaming section and I looked at all the offerings. Now, the first thing I'll say, the branding, the marketing, the packaging is out of this world. And I do not blame any of you for picking up this big shiny box and thinking that this is going to give you great game audio. The features listed on it, spatial sound, custom EQ, all of these things make it really sound like you're buying something top of the line. I hate to break it to you guys, most of these things are marketing gimmicks. While they do work, the efficacy is not even close to that of what we can do with like things like my audio tune or even the EQ that Gadgetry Tech Joe offers. There's so much more you can do with open source software, I really don't think it's worth it to buy a gamer headset for that set of features. And man, do they manipulate you. Some of those Turtle Beach headsets look like I'm buying like some futuristic upgrade and it's really kind of manipulative. Let's talk about the headsets that I did buy to test. I think the most popular headset that comes through my appointments that come through the comments down below are the Astro A40s. Sometimes the A50s, but I'm pretty sure the A50s are the exact same headphone of the A40s, just wireless. So I got myself a set of Astro A40s and the Mixamp to test. The other headset, which I think is the most common, are SteelSeries. So I selected the Top Dog SteelSeries. I got a set of Nova Pro Wireless. Those are the two gamer headsets that I decided to try. Both of those are around $200 to $300. I think the Astros you can really get for a deal maybe at like $190, but I think they retail at like $220. And the Steel Series brand new on Amazon is like $300, maybe $275 if you find it on a sale. That is a pretty penny. These better sound great. Well, let's talk about the Astros first. The experience of opening the box with the Astros makes me feel like I'm buying a 4090. You are spending at least $20 in the packaging here, and it just feels so manipulative. There's like transformers on the box. I don't know what this is. Is it a toy or is it a headset? Anyway, that aside, you get all the things that you need with it. I actually didn't use the mix amp for most of my testing. I plugged it in, I set it up. It did make the headphones sound different, but not in a good way. All of my testing was done either on the Shit Magni Heresy, which has since shorted out on me, and it has been replaced by the SMSL HO200. So all of the headsets that I test are plugged into that. They're receiving audio from my GoXLR. So before I get into the ripping and tearing of the Astros, Let's talk about the one good thing. I will say this mix amp is quite a handy little device. Having a knob that lets you switch the mix between two devices, game and voice, is really handy. Um, having a physical volume knob is also really nice. And in a pinch, this can connect two dual PCs together in a stream setup. So it is quite handy. But as Gadgetry Tech noted in his video, this does affect the tonality of the sound. Ideally, a DAC amp that you purchase should not impart that much change on the sound. This does, and it just kind of makes it a, a no-go for me. So it is an, a nice handy thing to have around, but I don't think it's as great as a lot of people make it out to be, especially when things like the GoXLR exist. So let me just say that the sound out of these doesn't even sound remotely close to $200 or $180 even. These barely sound like $80. These suffer the same thing that most gamer headsets suffer. One of my first headsets was a Logitech G735, and all of these headsets have this bloatedness. When I compare it to some of the nicer headsets I have, it's like somebody slid a piece of cellophane between my ear and the headset. Everything's just kind of muffled and muddy and mushy, and the Astros are no different than those old Logitechs that I had. I put them on and it's like immediately I lose resolution. It's it's like taking my glasses off and putting on an old prescription. I, I can see everything and I can move around, but everything's just a little less clear. Audiophiles will use terms like soundstage, separation, and imaging. When they talk about soundstage, they're talking about what does the virtual world feel like? Imaging, they're talking about how does it move from left to right? Can you tell where the sound is coming from? And resolution is just like it sounds, it's resolution. So that's what I'm referring to with these gamer headsets. They really lack the resolution. On top of that, the Astro's imaging isn't that great and the soundstage is very crowded. 
Most gamer headsets suffer from a crowded mushiness. When you're in Warzone, when you're in Call of Duty, when anything crazy is happening, everything kind of gets cluttered. It's kind of like moving from the built-in speakers in a TV to a nice sound bar. Everything just gets a little bit more separated. The Astros sound more like the built-in speakers in a TV. Comfort-wise, I have a huge head. I'm bald, so I wear hats all the time. I have glasses. Speaking of glasses, shout out Gamer Advantage. Shout out Joel at Gamer Advantage. He is the homie. He has been hooking me up for a long time with these glasses that keep my eyes and my head safe while I'm staring at the monitor making these videos all day for you guys. If you wanted to check out a pair, you can use code ART for a sweet discount over there. There is a link in the description below. With that being said, these Gamer Advantage glasses are great at going under a headset. The one thing that I noticed with the Astros with all of the headgear on, it's just a lot. And the cloth on top of the cloth and the cloth on the ears makes me sweat a lot and nor does it make like a really good seal. So when I cranked my audio, cause I'm deaf, you would get leak from my headset into my mic and it sounded terrible. My goal with hardware reviews on this channel is to make sure y'all's money is going as far as it possibly can. And if I see a sticker price of more than $100 on the Astros, even at $100, I can take that $100 and spend it on a pair of IEMs and your money will go so much further for the sound. It will be so much less cluttered. Even music will sound better. So I really hate to see people taking their hard spent money and falling prey to marketing schemes because the headset says gamer on it. The next gamer headset I decided to pick up to test was the SteelSeries Nova Pro Wireless. Now I picked these because they are the top dog from SteelSeries and SteelSeries is probably the second most popular brand I see in the comments, I see in the Discord, and I see in appointments. So I decided to go with those because I got the top of the line. Anything less than that, as capitalism has taught me, should be not as good. Maybe there's a few rare gems in there. Let me know in the comments. But I really do think gamer headsets spend all of their money on marketing and packaging and features you'll never use and not enough money on actually good audio. For a long time, I heard good things about the Nova Pro Wireless. I heard that they were way better than Astros, all of these things, so I decided to go out and pick them up. They were not better than Astros. In a lot of ways, they might be worse than Astros. The Wireless Edition have active noise cancellation. What does that mean? That means there are tiny mics on the outside of the headset that are always analyzing the sound that is going on around you and trying to cancel that out and doing that by injecting more sound into the headset. What does that mean? One, it's oddly quiet when you have the headset on. Two, it kind of makes all of the audio muddy. Three, all I could think about was the sound of my own heartbeat in my head. It really just kind of makes everything mushy. And the sad news about the Nova Pro Wireless, they were also just mushy. They had a little bit more bass kick, and I would say the high end was a little bit brighter, so the separation was better. I would say the resolution was slightly better, but in general, I didn't feel like I put $300 on my head. I really didn't, not even close. The wireless DAC was great. I could plug it right into a GoXLR. That's another reason why I'm not testing any USB headsets. I use a GoXLR, so I need at least an aux base station. The delay was too much for me though. I listen to my mic back in my headset when I'm recording, when I'm streaming, I'm a freak, I know, but the delay was so much that it made me speak in slow motion. I just don't see the price benefit of a wireless headset when I can get a stretchy extension cable and stand up and walk away from my setup if I need to, to grab something behind me. If I'm gaming, I'm gaming and I'm going to plug in and stay here. It really does just seem like a waste of money to spend on features you're never going to use. I think Bad C Tech said it best in response to me on Twitter. He said it's a $150 headset with $150 of connectivity. And the Nova Pro Wireless really does feel like that. It doesn't sound great but it does have a lot of connectivity options. Now, and that's an idea that I kind of want to expand upon. When you're buying a gamer headset, you are inevitably buying a bunch of other features that you don't really need. Do I need wireless? Do I need a separate game chat device? Do I need an app with pre-built EQs that kind of suck? Do I need five band EQ like a 1990s stereo on my mix amp? No, most of you guys are using my audio settings or you're using loudness EQ or you're using somebody else's audio settings. So you're never going to use those features. Why not just buy a headset that makes good sound? And if you really must, you're not going to buy a desktop mic. 
you need a headset, there is an option. And enter what I think is the best headset for most people out there. This is the Sennheiser PC38X. Now I picked this up a few months ago and I've been using it on and off for a few streams. This is probably the only gamer headset I would recommend to anyone. It works on console and it works on PC because they include two cables. The PC cable comes with a pink end and a green end. The pink end goes into your mic port and the green end goes into your headphone port so you can use your onboard motherboard audio. Now it also includes what they call a console cable and you'll see that this has a single end with three black rings of plastic. Now this has your headset and the mic on it. This is a great cable to plug into a controller or to plug into the front panel connector because sometimes those have the mic and the headset combined. This headset is insanely comfortable. It is only 28 ohms. Now, what does that mean? The ohms rating is how much power the drivers in these headset or the speakers need to be loud enough. The lower the number, the less power. 28 ohms means you can drive this off of your iPhone or your Android phone, kind of like IEMs. So they don't need a whole bunch of power. So that means they will be very loud. With the combo cable even, you can plug these directly into the mix amp and still use that voice game split. The other nice thing is that they have a volume control directly on this. When you're using my audio tune, one of the things that stops working is the volume slider in Windows. This is a great way to control the volume of the headset separate from Windows entirely. Like most headsets, when you flip up the mic, it mutes. It sounds great. Nothing really special. It's a headset mic. I personally would still go with a separate mic but this is a great option if you're on console or if you're really just anti-mic. Now, the sound, that's probably the most important part. These sound great. They sound super clear. There's great bass response and the imaging and separation, especially when things get hectic, hold up way better than either of the gamer headsets I talked about earlier in this video. The best part about them probably is the price to sound. These black ones usually go on Amazon. I have an affiliate link in the description below. They're usually about $180. You can get a kind of, in my opinion, ugly green color, which is usually cheaper for 160. And that includes everything you need, the PC cable, the console cable, and they will work right out of the box. In my opinion, this is what Astro should sound like for the price. The only problems I had with these are like the Astros. They have a cloth ear pad. So sometimes you can deal with noise leakage. They're also open back. So if you need something a little bit more isolating, these might not be the headset for you. The PC38X is also the most comfortable headset I have ever tried on. Whether I'm wearing my hat or I'm not wearing my hat, it fits great. It kind of contours to your head and like hugs it, never really squeezing it. I have a big head too. And I could wear these for hours, no complaints. Now the second and last headset I wanted to talk about in today's video is the Biodynamic DT900 Pro X. It's very important that it is the 900 Pro X. I wanted to give a quick shout out to Fresh Reviews. He does some reviews for keyboards, mice, IEMs. He inspired me to start doing some hardware reviews on the channel mixed in with settings. And also he was the one that shouted these out in his wall hack list way, way back. I picked these up as an option just to have a set of cans to use when I didn't want to use IEMs. And I have been so happy with these. The construction is great. They have a detachable cable, which is really nice if I ever need to replace it. The cable is also stock, an eighth inch cable, unlike a lot of audio filed headsets you get. It's 3.5, so it's not that big quarter inch. You can screw off the quarter inch adapter, plug it right into the headphone port. Also the ear pads on this, they're like a velour. So they're kind of like a crushed velvet and they really help when you're wearing them for a long time. One, they make a really good seal. They say they're open back, but they're pretty closed. I can't really hear much through them. Two, it really keeps you from sweating because it's not a shiny surface smashed against your head. Now, I will say having a big head, these do squeeze more than the PC38Xs, but they don't squeeze so much that I'm uncomfortable. These do not have a mic built in, so you will need a separate mic. As I've mentioned in other videos, one of the best, cheapest options that gets you into some great software that you can use with the tune is an Elgato Wave 3 mic. I'll link that description. I'll also link my tutorial to set up the audio tune with that mic in the description as well. That would be a great pairing with these. You could plug that directly into the mic, use their Wavelink software. The mic has a headphone port on it. The other great thing, like the PC38Xs, 
the DT900 Pro X's are a low ohm headphone. So not quite as low as the PC38X's, those need 28 ohms. These are 48 ohms. So while they do need a little bit more power, most mobile devices should still be able to handle that. And your PC or your GoXLR or your mix amp will handle this just fine. Now the sound out of these is a step above a PC38X's. They have a lot more bass and bass clarity. So a big thing about Warzone is a lot of the detail in what you're hearing on the map happens in the bass end of things. So footsteps are in the bass, explosions, gunshots, those all tend, especially at a distance, to be in the bass end. So the more detail you can hear there, the better, which is why it's really important you guys like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so when I upload the next video about the IM Roundup, you'll be on that because I think IEM still give you the edge on sound detail. But back to the DT900 Pro Xs, these are fantastic in the bass region. Where the PC38X kind of get a little muffly and muddy, not nearly as bad as the Astros, these hold up a lot better. These are also my movie watching, music listening headphone. When I really want to just sit back and enjoy something, I'm not sweating my butt off, this is the headset I use. Now, this is going to be a little bit more expensive than the PC38X. You can usually find these anywhere from 230 to 250 260 and I really think they're worth the price. The clarity, the bass response, and the isolation over the PC38Xs, these kind of seal off the world a little bit more than them. I really prefer these to the PC38X, but if you must need a mic, the PC38X should be your only option. Now, just a really quick note, if you're buying either of these headsets, you don't necessarily need a DAC amp and you don't need a mix amp. A mix amp isn't a thing. A mix amp is a proper noun made by Astro. So you can't go buy a mix amp from another company. Just a quick aside, you would be buying a DAC amp or just a amp, depending on your situation. We'll talk about that later in a video, but you don't need either of these. Both headsets that I talked about today, you could plug right into your onboard audio on your motherboard, into your monitor, even if you must, or like I mentioned just a second ago, into the Wave 3 headphone port and use the Wave software. You also shouldn't just go out and buy a DAC amp thinking it's going to give you magically better audio. It's not really how it works. I would really invest your money in one of these better headsets first. Speaking of these better headsets, now that I'm done testing it, this PC38X headset that I've used is going to get repackaged and given away to a lucky member of the community. So make sure you're following me over on Twitch twitch.tv slash art underscore is underscore war will be giving that away in the next week or so. Personally, I would still choose IEMs over either of these headsets. There's a lot cheaper entry options. You get a lot more bang for your buck and I'll have recommendations in that next video. So make sure you like, subscribe and click the bell so you know when I upload that IEM roundup, I'm gonna have $20, 50, 60, 80, 150, 200, $250, $500 recommendations. But let me tell you, after I tested all these crappy gamer headsets, that pile of crap that was the Novas, the awful Astros, I put on this $18 pair of Moondrop Chu 2 IEMs. $18. And when I tell you I enjoyed the sound more and I heard things clearer with these $18 IEMs than $300 Nova Pros, I am not blowing smoke up your ass. Okay, I promise you. I'll link them in the description below. Try them out. How mad you can be at $18 if they do suck. Return them. It's not going to kill you. Try them out. Let me know down below what you'd like to see besides these. Do you want to see a video more about DAC amps? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. Until next, when we talk about IEMs, I'll see you guys over on my Twitch stream, twitch.tv slash art underscore is underscore war. Until the next video, I'll see you all later. Peace.